I know it's getting late, some of you are clocking out, but if you'll just clock in for about five minutes, punch your neighbor and tell him, give him five minutes. Five minutes, just, ah, come on. I'm telling you, this is good stuff because it's not mine, it's God's. It's too smart for me, so I, this is not mine, this is his. So he takes his mat and God says, Ronnie, this is your mat. You're laying down, I, I know I went through some of this this morning, but some of you wasn't, wasn't here and then some of you didn't get it, it takes more than once, so it's your hard headed. And you're just, here I'll help you with these five minutes. Uh, you're laying down on your mat, I didn't come out of my pockets here. You're laying down on your mat. Thank you Lord. Thank you for my boys. Thank you for giving me such a wonderful, beautiful wife who doesn't shop too much. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. <laughs> you get my point. You start thanking Him for what you do have. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just meditate upon you. I welcome your presence as I lay here, get ready to rest tonight. I just worship you. You don't have to be all spiritual. I just lay there. And I don't know, those of you that have never experienced the Holy Spirit like this, I may freak you out, but as the Holy Spirit comes upon you, we believe that there is a prayer language that He'll give you. I know some preach and teach against that, but read the whole book of Acts. You'll find that it kind of messes with some people's theology. You have to rip out Acts chapter 19. That's way after Acts chapter 2, and Paul asks, some disciples, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Why would he ask people that already believe if they receive something that you're not supposed to receive after you believe because when you believe you got everything? Anybody get that? So the Bible says they begin to pray in language they never learn and prophesy. So I just lay in my bed and three-fourths of my prayer time is spent praying in language that I've never learned because I figure if, it's, if it is, and it is, God praying through me, for me, and for others, who better to know how to pray to God than God? So the Holy Spirit, so it's, you know, it's not like I have to get into some kind of, you know, Tina hitting a high note and, and, and Scott playing the bass, and I've got to get in an all-spiritual frame to just, I'm just praying, and I'm just thinking on Him, and I just start praying. She kamandolo boko sandale bo shita la bakaye. And I'm just praying in the Spirit. And I just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. If you never receive that, it doesn't make you a second class Christian. It's just, I'm telling you to go after Him. He'll give you that prayer language and it's incredible. Because I don't even have to think, know how to pray. I just start praying in the Spirit. And so I just start praying in the Spirit, and the Lord begins to fill my bed. And I begin to drift off to sleep, but as of sometimes I'm between awake and sleep, He starts speaking His Word to me. And the way that I learned to roll up my mat in the morning and carry it and keep carrying it, is I learned to stand on the Word. Everything else is sinking sand, but not Jesus. And the Word is Jesus and he begins to speak his word to me somewhere between sleep and awake and asleep and then somewhere sometimes in the midst of my sleep he comes to me in my dreams and then sometimes between waking up and being asleep and waking up he speaks to me and then sometimes I didn't hear anything but I just know God's been working on me all night because I've taken authority as I've welcomed Jesus into my night and he owns the night which is the beginning of my day so as I get up off my bed I'm not afraid I've not been terrorized I'm not fearful though there are occasions when the enemy tries to come in in my nighttime but instead of getting up pacing the house and being worried if I'm still down there I just look up and say get out of here devil Some of you wants to take authority. And so when I get up in the morning, I roll up my mat because my mat has now been filled with the presence of the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm rolling up? Not literally the bed that I sleep on, but I'm rolling up the rest of God that I enjoy. So I put the rest of God under my arm, 
words in there. It's all in there. I don't have to even just tote my Bible. I've got it all up in there. All up in the rest of God. I've got my word. And so now I'm going to the world. I'm going to the world carrying my rest. And I'm looking for somebody without rest. Because what I want to do is I find somebody without rest. I'm stepping through the doorway of deliverance. Because the Lord is delivering and setting me from who I've always been. And as he sets me free, he, carry, he takes me to the world that needs rest. And he helps me find the people who are needing rest. And I unroll my mat of rest. And I say, go ahead. Take a shot. Lay down. <laughs> Lay on my mat. You know what you're saying? Lay on my testimony, my experience. I'm telling you what he can do. I'm telling you what he has done. Look me in the eye and see. See Jesus. See his power. And as they lay down on the mat of our rest, they experience something more than religion they experience the hand and the power of God that transforms their lives are you hearing it so God wants you to carry his rest underneath your arm with you last of all as I close out with this I, I want you to get this As I stand on his word, sometimes the enemy fights. I'm carrying the rest. He's fighting. But that same Holy Spirit that is there when I lay down and everybody's away, he's wind. So he says, stand on the word, but he says, sail with the wind. How many has found that when you're laying down at night or when you're by yourself it's a little bit easier to get all prayed up and spiritual and you're just ready to go and then you get around a bunch of knotheads and it's like where did all that anointing go <laughs> but as I'm rolling up my mat and I'm attempting to carry them out Pastor Drew to Cersei High School and they're all cursing and smoking weed and having sex outside of marriage and they're all talking about how cool that is I'm carrying my mat and I'm I'm talking about the refuge on Wednesday night come on because there's a wind underneath me there's a wind behind me and I don't have to be stopped by the force and the wind of this world because I've got a greater wind blowing behind my back that says this is the greatest hour this is the last day hour there's an urgency in the air and I know what my mandate is you say I can't but I say I can you say we won't but I say we will the world says we're going under but I said we're going over you begin to dream the dreams of God and say the things of God you begin to expect the unexpectable. You begin to expect the great. Most of these that testified in, about Africa, they said, we didn't feel very spiritual. You have to understand that they were standing in the atmosphere of witchcraft everywhere we went. And so, of course, they didn't feel spiritual. But as we stood up in the authority of Jesus and took authority in his name, nonetheless, there was spiritual manifestation of the power of Jesus Christ. It's not about how I feel. It's about what I know. What do I know? The one who owns the night owns the day. And we take his authority into this world and we change it for his glory. I know I'm out of time. Just, I just need to say a couple things and we're almost done. So, like we're turning this corner. You are. You are as a person. And then we are as a body. I'm just speaking to you out of my heart what I feel somewhat I'm speaking to you somewhat prophetic right this moment we've been going through a season of transition and God says now we are turning a corner listen to me as we're turning this corner we're seeing the manifestation of influx of new people this influx mark my word will continue as long as we continue to be a house marked by love 
As long as we do not base what is most important to us on a set of rules and religion, but we base what most is important to us on relationship and a person. And his name is Jesus. The influx of new people will continue in the increase of manifestations of the power of God will become increasingly um, occur more cre increasingly often and we will see God do incredible things as we turn this corner but God wants you to turn the corner in your own life new ministries and new things will be born we of course as we went through a season of transition I thank God for sending Diana and Pastor Drew and Pastor Diana our way and just the brand new vision with the refuge and th there's a fresh release of what God is doing with that to our young couples here tonight and our our couples just college age and so forth there's a place for you to go on Wednesday nights as well and be a part um, and so we invite you to that there's new stuff coming for young married couples. Get ready. Those things are going to be unveiled. Just some new things that are going to be happening and ministries that are going to be unveiled and places for you to fit and places for you to minister. I'm, I'm excited about what God's doing. Just fresh. The people represented here in these steps are going to be saved. Yes, they are. Hallelujah. God's... One of the greatest challenges in this season has been the economics of, of our day. Most of you know in America the economy went south in about, if I remember right, 2008. Our church continued to prosper through 2010. In fact, 2010 was the greatest financial year of our church. We've seen our greatest increase ever. A lot of that had to do with, of course, the blessing of God, but he used the gas and oil industry in our area. I promise I'm almost done. But most of you know 2011 and this year 2012, that industry has also had an incredible downturn. And so 2011 on into 2012 has been an incredible challenge financially as a body. And so I believe that another area of turning a corner is finances something happened that I just want to share a testimony about and I, I do this I, I'm honest with a pure heart and I ask I, I really believe the Lord put this on my heart and I ask him if this is what you want show me when and and I'll just do whatever you put in my heart and so I was dealing with something as I have in the past year and a half and to be honest to a fault and I, I'm just being very honest with you there have been times that I have, and I say this with humility and honesty, but I am not a wolf, I am a shepherd. And, and there have been times to a fault that I have um, taken a personal, um, willful choice of a pay cut in the form of paying church bills. And we were facing a bill that we really couldn't pay, and I was looking at doing that again. And... I felt like the Lord put something else in my heart that that wasn't really um, always the answer just write the check and and even put some things on my family that shouldn't be and so as I prayed about what to do he put just a small thing in my heart I obeyed and that was um, during a day and by five, five o'clock that afternoon, I got a phone call that a person had discovered a checking account that they didn't even know that they had existed, that existed for years. And the checking account was nearly to the dollar, the exact amount of the bill. And they wrote a check for that bill, and it's right here on the bill. So I'm just putting the bill on the step tonight with the check and there's, um, Tim, when you get that, just put it somewhere where Kay can find the note and understands all my, 
she knows how to interpret my writing so she'll be able to bring forth the interpretation <laughs> I tell you that to say this I believe that the miracle is in the house some of you are not tithing that God's going to begin to deal with you about this last frontier of your life because often the last thing to come is obedience in our finances should we really tithe as New Testament believers? Really, it's just a starting place for us. What is tithe? It's 10% of our increase. If I don't tithe, should, you know, I just, am I kicked out of the church or not welcome? Or absolutely not. Of course, you're welcome. Let God work on you and grow you to that point. But I'm challenging you. Some of you are already there. It's time. But for some of you, you've been blessed, and God's going to ask you to do more than tithe. And the beginning of our miracle is in the house. And it starts, I believe, in this service tonight. Some of you are going to do what this person did and just obey God and give something special. And I don't understand why I'm saying all this, except it's not just because I want to do it, but I believe it. God's put it in my heart. We're turning a corner. It takes money to build God's kingdom. And I promise you that I'm doing my best to do my part. I promise you I wouldn't ask you to do something that I wouldn't do. But I'm being honest with you that to a fault I have done that because there's times that I've written checks that he didn't ask me to write. And I just want to encourage you to be obedient. But I also believe that beyond this room and even beyond this body, God's sending us resources, finances, and financial breakthrough from people because I believe that he causes the wealth of the wicked to be laid up for the righteous. Bring it in, Lord. <laughs> Pastor Drew's going to get his checkbook. Praise God. <laughs> double digits, brother, double digits. <laughs> Will you stand with me all over the room?